As we descended deeper into the abyss, our hearts raced with anticipation. The air thickened with an eerie silence, broken only by the echoes of our footsteps. Every step brought us closer to the edge of sanity, as the truth lurking beneath Oak Island began to unravel. Prepare yourself for a bone-chilling journey, where reality merges with the supernatural, and the final excavation becomes a chilling encounter with terror itself. The early treasure-related activities on Oak Island are shrouded in mystery and rely mostly on word-of-mouth stories from the late 18th century. It wasn't until later that publishers took an interest in investigating these stories. One of the earliest accounts, published in 1857, involved a settler named Daniel McGuinness, who claimed to have found a depression on the island in 1799. Believing it to be connected to Captain Kidd's buried treasure, McGuinness enlisted the help of two men, John Smith and Anthony Vaughn, to excavate the site. They discovered a layer of flagstones and oak platforms at intervals, but abandoned the excavation at 30 feet due to superstitious fears. Around 1802, the Onslow Company embarked on a similar excavation, reaching a depth of 90 feet. They encountered layers of logs, charcoal, putty, coconut fiber, and a stone inscribed with symbols. However, the pit flooded with water at 60 feet, leading to the abandonment of the project. The Truro Company, formed in 1849, re-excavated the pit down to 86 feet, but faced flooding again. They resorted to drilling boreholes and discovered metal fragments, wood, and coconut fiber. Further attempts were made to intersect the treasure by digging additional shafts and tunnels, but seawater continued to flood the pits. The Truro Company eventually ran out of funds and dissolved in 1851. The first published accounts of these activities appeared in newspapers in the 1850s and 1860s, recounting the treasure hunting efforts, the mysterious stone, and the discoveries made by the Onslow and Truro companies. These stories and accounts have fueled speculation and intrigue surrounding Oak Island's hidden treasure, captivating the imaginations of treasure hunters and enthusiasts for generations. In 1861, the Oak Island Association conducted a major excavation on Oak Island. They re-excavated the original pit to a depth of 88 feet and dug two additional shafts. However, both new shafts filled with water when a flood tunnel was breached. At one point, platforms placed in the original shaft collapsed, causing any potential treasure to drop to a lower level. Accidental deaths occurred during the excavation, including a pump engine boiler explosion. In 1862, another shaft was dug, parallel to the original one, to pump water out, but the flood water overwhelmed the pumps. The association also attempted to seal the alleged flood tunnels at Smith's Cove, but failed due to the tide breaking through barriers. In 1864, a final attempt was made to intersect the money pit, but flood tunnels were breached again. The Oak Island Association's efforts ended when they ran out of funds. In 1866, the Oak Island El Dorado Company, also known as the Halifax Company, formed to continue the search. They focused on the original main shaft but found bits of wood, coconut fiber, clay, and mud without significant discoveries. They abandoned the search in 1867. In 1896, another group arrived on the island with steam pumps and boring equipment. While they couldn't keep water out of the flooded side shaft, they took boring samples and claimed to have brought a small piece of sheepskin parchment to the surface. The group poured red paint into the flooded pit in 1898, revealing three exit holes around the island. During the excavation attempts on Oak Island, the pit flooded with seawater at various depths. Some explorers claimed the presence of an elaborate drainage system that connected the ocean beaches to the pit. Treasure hunters suggested that coconut fibers found at Smith's Cove in 1851 indicated a man-made tunnel used to feed seawater into the pit. However, geologist Robert Dunfield could not find evidence of a tunnel during his examination of the pit walls. In 1995, the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution conducted a scientific study and concluded that the flooding was likely due to natural factors, such as the interaction between freshwater and tidal pressures, rather than a man-made tunnel. The presence of water-filled anhydrite cavities beneath the island, resulting from the glacial tumulus system, may contribute to the recurring flooding. 
The bedrock is located at a depth of 38 to 45 meters in the pit area. A stone with mysterious markings was reportedly found at a depth of 90 feet on Oak Island. The stone was described as being square, two feet long, and a foot thick. Different accounts suggest that the stone was built into the chimney of an old house near the pit or held by the Smith family. Attempts to decipher the markings on the stone were unsuccessful, and it was later removed and taken to Halifax. Various individuals claimed to have seen the stone over the years, but no one could translate the inscription. The stone eventually ended up at Creighton's Bookbindery in Halifax, where it was used as a beating stone. The inscription, if any, had worn away by that time. Different translations of the symbols on the stone have been proposed, including 10 feet below are 2 million pounds buried and 40 feet below 2 million pounds lie buried. However, these translations are not widely accepted, and the true meaning of the markings remains unknown. A stone with mysterious markings was discovered at a depth of 90 feet on Oak Island. It was described as a square stone, measuring 2 feet in length and a foot thick. The stone was either incorporated into the chimney of an old house near the pit or held by the Smith family. Numerous attempts to decipher the markings proved unsuccessful, and the stone was eventually taken to Halifax. Despite being seen by various individuals, no one could decipher the inscription, which had worn away by the time the stone ended up at Creighton's bookbindery. Different translations of the symbols have been suggested, such as 10 feet below are 2 million pounds buried and 40 feet below 2 million pounds lie buried. However, these translations lack widespread acceptance, leaving the true meaning of the markings a mystery. The Oak Island Money Pit has been associated with various theories about the origin of the treasure buried there. One theory suggests that the pit holds pirate treasure, possibly buried by Captain Kidd or Blackbeard. Another theory involves Templars, Masons, or Incas seeking to protect their treasure from persecution or conquistadors. William S. Crooker proposed that British engineers and sailors used the pit to store loot from the British invasion of Cuba. Other possibilities include Spanish sailors hiding treasure from a shipwreck or British troops using the pit during the American Revolution. John Godwin suggested that French army engineers may have dug the pit to hide the treasury of the fortress of Louisbourg. The true origin and nature of the treasure on Oak Island remain elusive. Numerous legends have emerged linking various historical figures to Oak Island, but none have been proven. One story suggests that Marie Antoinette's missing jewels may be hidden on the island. Another theory proposes that Francis Bacon, a supposed leader of the Rosicrucians, concealed manuscripts and treasures in the pit, claiming his authorship of Shakespeare's works. Some speculate that the pit was dug by exiled Knights Templar and may contain the Holy Grail or the Ark of the Covenant. Researchers have found alleged codes and clues in Shakespeare's writings and rock formations on the island. However, these theories lack widespread credibility among mainstream academics. Additionally, suggestions have been made that the Money Pit is actually a historical tar kiln from the British naval stores industry. Barry Fell, who claimed the symbols on the stone resembled the Coptic alphabet, theorized that Coptic migrants constructed the pit. Fell's credibility is disputed by most mainstream academics. There is evidence of far more activity on the island than was first believed. Nonetheless, treasure, it cannot be shown. The only thing that is left is hope, as well as the willpower of some to continue looking. Let us know what you think, and we will see you in the next video.